This is my PSA Dagger Micro. Not the Micro X1 and not the overrated C1. It's finally in a spec that I wanted. The regular, no bells and whistles, Glock 43X clone Dagger Micro. Let's make sure this motor scooter is clear. Clear, 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 still clear. This took me a while to get because as you all know, these are kind of scarce. For me to get my hands on this, I had to order the frame by itself, which I had to wait for their silly mystery drops. So I got the frame and then I went in and chose the slide that I desired. If you've seen my review with my Micro Dagger C1, excuse me, X1. Frames all identical. The only difference is slide length, slide and barrel length. That is the only difference. It all boils down to personal preference. Do you want a Glock 43X clone or do you want a Glock 48 clone? Me, I prefer the dimensions of the 43X. All right, you'll notice it's still dirty. I recently got back from the range, maybe 30 minutes ago, I guess. I'll start from the top to the bottom, work my way down. What do you get with this Dagger Micro for its budget price? Starting with the sights, unlike the Glock, where everyone complains, where everyone unnecessarily complains about Glocks, you not sights, because apparently you mofos can't. You get three dot sights, which are nice. These are fine on the Glock. I actually like these, but these are also fine. They both work the same for me. I, I don't I don't get it. It's not a big deal. It is optic ready for um shield cut, I guess. RMSC. So all the micro optics, whatever. You gun guys know what it is. I'm a fan of the contrast with the optic plate. They left the optic plate black. They didn't change it to match the tan slide. Or if you got the green, the optic plate does not match the green slide. Good look. Interesting look. Beautiful. The serrations, unlike the Glock 43X, instead of being straight vertical up and down, they're slightly diagonal, which is kind of nice. Um, they're also deeper, so it gives you a better grip on the situation. Takedown lever sticks out a little bit more than on the Glock. Good job, PSA. Not that anything's wrong with Glock's takedown lever. PSA's takedown lever is better. Coming through, you have a rounded trigger guard, unlike Glock's aggressively angled trigger guard. And you have a hinged trigger system, which everyone either loves it or they hate it. For me, it's, I could not care less either way. It's a trigger. Mosey on down here, you got a average Joe magazine release. Nothing fancy about that. It is not ambidextrous, so the Slide catch or slide release only on one side. Magazine release only on one side. Um, obviously you can do the old switcheroonie for the magazine release if you were a lefty. Oh, I forgot, there's trigger snobs that like seeing trigger play, which it's weird to me. But whatever. I'm gonna say the things you guys like to hear. When you squeeze the trigger, you feel a bit of sponginess. Oh, you feel that? You like the sponginess right there, guys? You feel the sponginess? I have to talk shit about the sponginess, guys. People get off on that shit for some reason. So yeah, the trigger's kind of spongy until you hit the wall and then break. Ooh, reset. And then click. There, did you get your rocks off? Are you satisfied now? I will never understand gun folks. How is that entertaining watching someone squeeze a trigger? Coming on down to the pistol grip, the texturing on this, the stippling, it gives you just enough grip, nice little rough sandpaper feel to it. And it's not just on the left and right sides, it is on the back and on the front as well. If you are new to this channel, if you happen to see me do something like this, before you embarrass yourself in the comments, there's nothing behind this camera. The only thing behind this camera is my ceiling. Calm your tits. 
Moving on. You come down to the end of the pistol grip, you'll notice it's slightly, uh, it's slightly flared out, Magwell style, I guess. There's a cutout right here to make magazine extraction easier, I guess. I don't see how this is necessary. I mean, you push the button, the magazine drops out. Another unnecessary thing, the beaver tail on this sticks out a little further than it does on the uh, 43X, ever so slightly. You have to really be staring at it to notice. It does come with an accessory rail, so you can add your flashlights, toasters, laser beams, or what have you. Um, I heard vaping's hot in the streets right now. If you guys wanna attach your vape sticks or whatever to it that's fine do you however in glock 43x form there's only one notch one notch glock style now for my pros and cons or likes and dislikes if you will mm. oh also apparently some folks don't like when you continuously rack your guns well guess what i own this and last time i checked this was my channel rack 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 and rack all right yeah i realized i was starting to cater to the viewers then i remembered the viewers don't pay my bills i have a real job so if you don't like what's on the video you can go screw yourself moving on huge pro for me with this at first i thought the uh, aggressive serrations were unnecessary until i use them they're they're great they actually feel better than working than using what comes on the glock yeah, this, work, this feels much better than the Glocks. And also, the finish on the slide, it's more, um, it's not, the finish on the slide, it's less slick than it is on the Glock also. So, again, makes for easier slide manipulation. Uh, another huge pro for me, with this dagger, with this dagger, with my dagger compact also, is the takedown lever. This, t this takedown lever sticks out a little bit more, ever so slightly, a little bit more than it does on the Glocks, and it makes takedown so much easier. Another thing you may like, if you're accustomed to shooting a 43X, then you're gonna be right at home with this, you will love this. That's a huge pro for me. I like shooting this, this shoots great. Guess what, this shoots exactly like this. Finally, capacity. It comes with a 15 round mag, whereas this comes with the 10 round mag. Not that it matters, cause this will take his mags, this will take his mags, or her mags. I don't know what these pistols identify as, excuse me. Now for my cons. One con I have with this, PSA still needs to get their shit together. Getting these out in time. Doing drops once a day, maybe twice a day, it's, it's getting old. There's a lot of people out there that are still trying to get their hands on one and they, I can see it can be quite, quite frustrating. So uh, yeah, PSA, fix your business. My list of dislikes will be very short because I'm, I'm actually a fan of this thing. Out of the box, fresh out of the box, where unlike the Glock where I can take this out of the box, no lube, no extra oil, no nothing, and this will run like a champ. However, this thing fresh out of the box, just like this one did, light primer strikes, light primer strikes. However, as you recall, I had a ton of light primer strikes with this. I had a few light primer strikes with this one. So I'm gonna chalk that up to that break-in period that people mention. However, if you are on a budget and all you can afford for self-defense is one of these, you do not wanna to have to deal with a 
break in period so you can defend yourself. What you want is for your weapon to be 100% out of the box. That's what you want. Clock perfection. I had a few like primer strikes. Not a big deal. I worked around them. I will continue to take this out, put more rounds through it to eventually break it in, which again, sounds kind of silly for something you want for self-defense. That is pretty much it for my dislikes. Please chime in below. Let me know your thoughts on the uh, PSA Dagger Micro. Are you a fan of these? Are you not a fan of these? If you have one, what configuration do you have and why did you choose that configuration? Do you have the extreme carry? Do you have the X1? Do you have the overrated C1? What do you have? Chime in below. Let us all know. Peace and chicken grease.